Hello! It's a rare view of the kitchen table because I simply don't have the facilities to actually film anything this big usually. Look, it's that quarter size Pac-Man machine again because they've gone and done another one. So you may remember, reviewed this a while ago and yeah, it's very nice. What you may not know is that uh, there were a couple of problems with it, like screen resolution and volume and stuff, and they totally fixed them for the actual release which is amazing. This doesn't normally happen with products. Anyway, it's Pac-Man. It's a quarter size. But now, there is another one of it. It is Gallagher from the space year 1981, and considered one of the best shoot 'em ups of the time, from the golden age of the video arcade, as weird ponces call it. So yeah, as you can see, it is indeed an exact replica of the arcade machine, because you know, that's what you're paying your money for. And if you can see down there, because I can't get any lights down it, but uh, you've got all the surround of the bezel around the screen, you've got your marquee at the top, you've got all your other gubbins and the flashes and the pictures, because that's how this stuff works. I was slightly disappointed um, when I looked at the side to discover that it's a, just sort of a sticker with the Gallagher stuff on, when previously on the Pac-Man one it was like art which was stuck to the whole side. Um, but looking at a Gallagher machine, I think that's because the original machine had a sticker on the side. It's accuracy in it. And these guys are all about the accuracy. The story goes that they buy an arcade machine, get it in the office, and take terrifying tiny measurements of it in order to have it entirely reproduced correctly. Which is nice, isn't it? So, what's it like to play on then? Because let's face it, whilst it looks nice on the old shelf, you do want to have a game of Gallagher. Which is apparently pronounced Galaga, I heard somewhere. But I'm not saying that, because it sounds absolutely horrible. Yeah, well, as you would expect, you turn it on, you press the little credit button, and away thee go. And yeah, it's a good game, Gallagher. Still holds up after all these years. Sequel to 1979's classic Galaxian adds a few extra gameplay features, most notably that the weird aliens can suck your spaceship up and then you have to shoot to get it released, and then you can control two at once for twice the firepower and twice the area to get hit in, which is not so specifically wonderful. As before, the little buttons work fantastically well, um, the little joystick works great. I do have one complaint, and that is a bit of wobble. So on your joystick, which only goes left and right, um, locked to the two positions as it was in the arcade, it's got a bit of vertical wobble on it. Um, it's a little bit loose up and down, which isn't amazing. The Pac-Man one was really tight, whereas this one, it doesn't really hamper the game at all, but it'd be much nicer if it was just lateral movement and not the little bit of up and down wibble. But I split hairs. It's a good version of the game. You can have a lot of fun with it. It is Gallagher. It is very authentic and it's in an incredibly authentic replica of the arcade machine. That's the whole point, isn't it? I'll tell you what is a shame though, that they're never going to release Galaxian. Oh no, I went and told you a lie. Yep, Galaxian is coming out before the end of the year, I believe. Not quite ready to order yet. Uh, this is an almost complete unit. They said there is one difference, which is uh, the um, gameplay flash artwork here will be a more vivid colour to match the arcade machine on the final thing, because they are all about the details. So yeah, Galaxian came out in 1979. It's forerunner to Gallagher, of course, and it's basically Space Invaders, but where the aliens come down and try and kiss you kiss you on the lips while they fire bullets into your teeth. Um, yeah, it's very good. I personally prefer Gallagher. I think most people do. It has that kind of uh, little bit of extra to it, Gallagher. And there was the third in the series, wasn't there? Gaplus, which nobody ever talks about. My favourite thing about Gaplus is that in some parts of America it was called Gallagher 3, despite the fact that there wasn't a Gallagher 2. Ah, marketing. But yeah, let's have a look at the old uh, device Rooney here. Lovely artwork on the side. This is the full side flash thing. I'll tell you what I really like as well. Um, it feels, it's got some texture to it. You can feel the sort of raised parts that are black, which uh, adds even more of the old quality to it. I do enjoy that. Around the back of it, looks like an old arcade machine. And look, there is more art on the sides again. But yeah, it's a nice one, that. Um, it's a good game. It's a nice one, that. It's one of those games people remember fondly, and well they should, because it's still good fun. And they're doing bloody Ms. Pac-Man as well! Would you believe it? Well, of course you believe it. Like, there's physically one right in front of you here. It's, it's not a difficult thing to believe. Um, yeah, this was originally a conversion kit 
um, for Pac-Man, conceived as something called Crazy Otto to give the game a bit of an upgrade, and due to some weird legal wrangling was uh, bought by Midway and then kind of released as an official sequel to Pac-Man, although it wasn't developed by Namco. It's all very odd. It's pretty similar to Pac-Man. Obviously you've now got Ms. Pac-Man who's got a bow on her head, which is uh, a massive defining feature. That and her lipstick and eyelashes, of course. Uh, the mazes are filled in, um, there's more warp points from one side to the other. Uh, the fruit now runs around, just like fruit doesn't in real life. Yeah, you get the idea. I kind of prefer it to Pac-Man myself now, but I think that could be just because I've played Pac-Man so much in the past and not played that much of Ms. Pac-Man, so yeah, here we are. So yeah, this is a uh, almost finished prototype again. Uh, there's going to be more vivid colour on this bit, but also they have yet to add the kickstand, which the original arcade machine has. So any of you people at home going, oh, they've forgotten the kickstand, don't worry. It'll be coming when it's released. Look at the pretty art on the side. Again, really nice. Really well done. Mm. And, yeah, the slightly raised thing, which I do enjoy. It just kind of uh, drips quality on you, really, doesn't it? Um, yeah, back of it is like the back of an arcade machine. I think we've been through this before. Again, just a really beautifully put together replica, which is exactly what you want, isn't it? So there you are. Look, you could buy them all and put them all together and have your own little arcade. The problem is, they ain't the cheapest things. They're 150 or 130 depending on the machine, so you would have to be quite the yacht owner in order to actually have your own set of these. As with so many things in life, pick your favourite. But yeah, they're really, really bloody nice. Controls work fine. As I say, you've got a little bit of the wibbly drift on the Galaxian and Galaga, but it doesn't really affect the actual gameplay, which is the important thing. Other than that, they are pretty much flawless. Um, they do a fantastic job of playing the games and do a fantastic job of looking really accurate and nice to the old arcade machines, which you can't complain about. And most importantly, they've reminded me how much I dislike your spaceship in Galaxian because it's just too bloody big. That's my excuse for not being very good anyway. Oh, I'll tell you what, let's get them all making noise so it sounds like an old arcade. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. <laughs> 